Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my channel. I'm at the Jat Jat Plant Market today in Bangkok, Thailand. And today, I'll be taking you to a very unique plant shop that specializes in a succulent called Euphorbias, namely Euphorbia francoisei. Some people may call it Euphorbia francoisei, but here in Thailand, they go by the name Francois for short. The owners are one of the leading Francois breeders here in Thailand, and their plants have won numerous awards at various plant competitions. Their shop is called Little One Plant Nursery. Here's the shop right there, and here's their contact information. You can contact them via their Facebook page as well as Line. Line is a chat application similar to WhatsApp. It's currently the most popular chat application in Thailand and the preferred method if you would like to contact them. You can download and install the app and add their contact information and ask any questions you may have. They also have a YouTube channel that provides information about Franc Sua, such as cultivation, propagation, and how to tell between a nice plant and the ones that are just an average. However, their clips are in Thai, but you can try turning on the automated English subtitles. Some of the information I provide here are translations of the content that they provide in their clip. Are you guys ready? Let's go take a look inside and see what they have today. The moment you walk in, you are greeted with different types of succulents. On the right hand side here, you can see a nice selection of aloes. These hybrid aloes are bred into a variety of color and leaf forms. In terms of care, these are similar to succulents and will do well in partial sun. Just don't overwater them and wait until the pot is light in your hand before you water them again. On this side, there are several types of dickia. They belong to the Bromelade family and are native to South America, mainly Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, Argentina, and Bolivia. They mostly are terrestrial plants that can withstand a certain degree of drought. Although they are considered a succulent, they don't store water inside their leaves, but resort to going dormant. They're quite easy to care for, just as long as you give them lots of sun and be careful not to overwater them. When they reach a certain age, they will start developing pups or small plantlets that can be removed and propagated. So they're pretty easy to propagate. It just takes some time and patience. There are currently more than 500 species of Dickia right now, and new hybrids are being added constantly. This Dickia is called Moonglow. It is significantly less thorny than the other Dickias and looks more like an aloe. Check out the bright yellow core surrounded by the lime green leaves. The plant starts off being all green only to develop the bright yellow core as it matures. By the way, the prices you see here are in Thai baht. If you'd like to get an idea of how much it costs in US dollars, just divide the number by 30 and you'll get a rough estimate. This particular one is Encolarium horridum. It's native to Brazil. It belongs to the bromelade family as well, but it has adapted to grow in dry, arid conditions with minimal water. They can grow up to 20 to 40 centimeters and likes a well-drained soil and make sure to give it plenty of sun. These two plants are codex plants and they belong to the Stephania genus. I'm not quite sure what species it is, but the codex is irregularly shaped with huge round leaves. And look at this gorgeous patterning on the leaves. What's really beautiful about these two plants is the pink petioles that you can see here. Some of you may be familiar with this cousin, the Stephania erecta, which has a round codex with coin-sized round leaves. The Stephania erecta has gained quite a bit of popularity recently thanks to beautiful pictures on social media such as Pinterest and other social media outlets. It's also native to Thailand and quite easy to find. Maybe I'll cover this on a separate clip. This is Manfreda undulata mint chocolate chip. Check out the silvery mint color wavy leaves and the intense brown dense spots resembling chocolate chips. These resemble agave, but they do not die after blooming. It's such a beautiful plant.
Here's a really cool plant. This is Seropigia armandii. It's native to Madagascar, and it's a perennial succulent that can climb onto shrub or trees. However, if there are no shrub or trees nearby, they just grow on the ground and develop roots wherever the stem touches the ground. This plant does really well in USDA hardiness zones 11A to 11B. Oh, look at this. Here's Euphorbia labatii, red leaf. This species is only found in a region in Madagascar and develops a codex as the plant matures. Leaf color, as you can see here, can vary anywhere from greenish red to a deep crimson red. And as you can see, each plant has different patterning on their leaves. These are Drostenias, and it's a genus that has about 100 or so species and has a wide range of habitat. Some people like them because they resemble miniature palm trees, and their Thai name is Maprao Taleasai, which means desert coconut. They come in a variety of leaf shapes and color, like this one for example. It's a hybrid showing gorgeous, intense variegation. As they mature, they will develop codexes, which give them an age appearance. They also have these odd looking inflorescence, which looks like the sun with the rays coming out the sides. Each one houses a number of male and female flowers, which bloom separately to maximize cross-pollination. When the seeds are ripe, they explode or spring out to some distances to get as far away from the mother plant as possible. All right, so we've gone through half the plants in this shop and now to remaining half, which is their specialty, Euphorbia francoisei. Or again, some people may call it Euphorbia francoisei. The Thais call it Francois for short. So I'm just gonna go by that name. Starting off on the right-hand side, here's where the most basic plants are, and it's also the most affordable. As you can see here, most of the plants have long, slim, oval leaves and kind of a leggy growth and this resembles their native form and that's why the prices are quite low at about a dollar each because they are very similar to what is found in nature cultivators generally try to achieve plants with low dense and compact growth with wider leaf structures and to do this they sometimes cross pollinate with one of their cousin the euphorbia tularensis which is this one right here. As you can see here, the Tularensis has much smaller leaves and more compact growth, but it does not have the vivid colors the Francois have. When they cross Francois eyes with Tularensis, what you end up with is a hybrid with more compact growth, wider leaves, but paler colors. And then they take this hybrid and cross it back with another more colorful francois. What they hope for is that some of the plants will retain both the compact growth as well as colorful leaves. By repeating this for several generations, they end up with more and more compact forms with wider leaf blades. Some of the leaves are spade or triangular shaped, while others appear to develop palmate or lobe leaf structures. Frung soils are fairly easy to care for. They do best in bright morning sun with sufficient water. Make sure you let the substrate dry out between waterings or else it may rot. An easy way to tell whether a plant needs watering is just to feel the weight of the pot. If it's light, then it's time to water. The substrate they recommend includes four parts peat moss, three parts sifted coconut peat, two parts fine pumice, and one part rough sand all mixed together. So how can you tell an average franc sua from a highly prized one? Well, according to the owner of the shop, the average price franc sua resembles that of the native form, which has long oval leaves and leggy structures. The color may not be as bright and the veining may not be as sharp or intense. Whereas the ones that are expensive and highly prized have undergone multiple generations of crossbreeding and result in a dense compact form with wide, broad leaf structures. Some of them may be palmate or have lobed leaf structures and very unique colors like white, 
black or other intense colors, anything you don't normally see in the native form. Leaf and color patterns also play a role in their price, but not as much as their form and structure. So in other words, first look for the form. You want a dense, compact form with really nice leaf shapes and leaf structure. Then you look at the color and see if the veinings are sharp or not. The rib pattern on the leaves is not a sure indication of their price because some highly prized francois do not show these intense rib veinings on their leaves. However, some average francois may show really clear, very dominant ribbing. I guess you can say that the most evolved francois are the ones that least resembles the native form and therefore commands the highest price. For example, in this tray, each plant costs 2,000 baht or almost 70 US dollars. You can see that the leaves are no longer narrow pointed ovals like the ones we see in the first tray. Here are some very unique items. These are variegated plants with gorgeous bright colors. Quite unique, I've never seen these before. Certainly a collector's item. This one is the highlight of the shop. It's the most expensive francois in this shop today. And check out its form. It's a very compact form, almost hugging the ground with wide palm leaves. Almost resembles that of a maple. So nice. They also have a book. This one, this book is Euphorbia Francoisiae, the Jewel of Succulent Euphorbias. And it's written by the owner of the shop. Very nice. And it contains a very nice, colorful illustration and pictures of various species, including care tips and recommendations. So if you're interested in purchasing, purchasing this book, the cost is around $30 plus shipping. The shipping cost may be a little bit high if shipped from Thailand, but you can contact them if you're interested in buying the book. They also have it in English, in Chinese, and also in Thai. Thai. Very beautiful, very nice. This is Euphorbia fusiformis. The variety name is Candalensis. It originated in India, where it is found about 500 meters above sea level. And they normally grow on rocky ground and under harsh weather conditions. It's capable of forming a caudex or large tuber as it grows. It's not usually seen and can be quite rare, hence the high price here. And this concludes my tour of the Little One Plant Nursery. If you enjoy this clip, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. For those of you who have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll try to get them answered as soon as possible. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for following me. I'll see you in my next clip. Have a good day.